once upon a time i shared with us here what god is making out of your life and my life it is important faith is vision dependent it is important you understand what god is making out of your life are we together this gives you the grace to stay to be built if you do not know what you are becoming in righteousness if you do not know what you're becoming by grace you will not be encouraged to continue you will not be encouraged to remain and i call it a koinonia believer and the lord impressed it upon my heart in the place of prayer to remind us again there are about six elements this is what you are becoming as a believer under this grace number one you are becoming a spiritually vibrant believer this is the first thing you are becoming by reason of this immersion by reason of your submission to this apostleship this is what god is making out of your life a passionate believer who is in love with jesus and in love with the things of god it's important for you to know that when we take our time to invest in the atmosphere that is created per service per meeting it is to this intent it is our partnership with god that you become a spiritually vibrant believer number two to believe a be to become a believer who is a person a man or a woman of character you have to take note of that character with a growing determination to become like jesus in all his ramifications a growing determination that even if you are not there yet you must have it at the back of your mind that week in week out sermon after sermon series after series prayer after prayer singing and worshiping after worship the goal is to mold you like the potter molding the clay that you become a believer who is full of the character of the spirit hallelujah number three god's intent god's goal god's vision for us all as believers under this ministry is to become intelligent and transformed believers transformation is a major component in all that we do intelligent and transformed believers believers whose minds have become word compliant believers who have a thorough understanding of the word of god alongside the dynamics of making that word work it's not enough to have a head knowledge a mental ascent of the word of god you must know how to translate the word of god from prophecy to its manifestation here and now it's called the ministry of the word not just the preaching of the word the ministry of the word is a holistic capture brings you to a point of enlightenment and helps you to see the point of application it is the reason why our teachings are not vague at the end of every discussion that happens upon this altar is a point of relevance and application it is important for you to see how the thoughts the words that you are learning how they play out to making you a better believer and making you a more effective person are we learning so your spiritual vibrancy your character christ-like character intelligence and transformed believer number four god's goal for us in making us become believers is that we become highly anointed and empowered believers it's important for you to pay attention to this god intends for you and i under this grace and by your discipline your sacrifice your consistency that you become a very anointed and empowered believer you are only a blessing to the degree to which you are empowered it takes beyond knowledge to create impact and to have your destiny come to fruition you need empowerment divine empowerment tarry in jerusalem he said until ye be endued with power from on high number five 
what is God's goal for us as believers under this grace and of course I believe that this also represents his intention for believers world over number five to become responsible purpose-driven and effective believers responsible purpose-driven effective believers I am a strong advocate of responsible Christianity a faith practice that helps you to have a sense of destiny that you're not just serving God arbitrarily you are responsible you are purpose driven you know that God is going somewhere with you he says I know the thoughts that I think towards you Jeremiah 29 11 they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end God has an expected end and you must know that end scripture says he declares the end from the beginning every believer must have a sense of destiny a sense of destiny in Christ God is taking us somewhere as individuals families businesses and as a ministry number six the final intent behind this discipleship this mentorship this school of the spirit is that God intends to produce out of us agents of societal and territorial transformation this is a very personal one because I think until recently most believers do not know or they do not think that they have a role to play as far as transforming territories and societies is concerned and I've taught you here in many series for that matter that the believer is called salt he is called light are we together he says we are the salt of the earth Matthew chapter 5 13 to 16 then he says we are the light of the world it's important for you to function as salt and to function as light that means your praying in tongues your Bible study your character your studying scripture your falling under the anointing and standing up must be translated to a context that serves Jesus to the betterment of society the Jesus you know the Jesus you've come to love must be able to be a blessing to all and sundry and this is not just to people of faith believers and unbelievers alike must see your impact in society the government the powers that be must come to reckon with the fact that your spirituality is an advantage to the civilization of your time it's unfortunate that in many christian circles the government's perception of believers is that we are a bunch of fanatics who are a nuisance to advancement a nuisance to civilization but it ought not to be so you are the salt of the earth the assignment of salt is to preserve and to add value you are the light of the world we give illumination the Bible defines light as that which makes manifest the glory of God now so the first assignment I have tonight is to remind you that whilst you are seated listening to me or connected by way of the internet have it at the back of your mind that this is what Jesus is doing in my life that after a few weeks a few months one year two years three years you must be able to justify your submission to this grace using these indices so if someone asks you not outside and says tell me the benefit of your becoming part of this family if the only thing you say is I received a miracle you disappointed God me and all of us you must have intelligence enough to defend your stay why have you been here why do you come week in week out why do you listen to the messages why do you fast why do you pray then you can speak like a believer who has been properly mentored to this end my spiritual vibrancy are we together my transformation now that justifies your stay anyone who hears you speaking like that would want to join the kind of system that has produced this intelligence many believers are not matured and they do not intend to be matured because the system that molds and makes them is scattered and not methodical they don't know what they should become 
They just know that I can pray. They just know that I can fast. But the truths are not connected together to give them a sense of purpose and destiny. You should leave your house every Sunday or every other day. You should click on any message with the intent that I am on this journey to becoming all this and even more. Spirit break out. Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Listen, let me tell you this The world cannot reject any believer Who becomes this To any degree The world does not yet have the immunity to reject any believer who becomes spiritually vibrant a man or a woman of character a man or a woman intelligent and transformed a man or a woman highly anointed and empowered a man or a woman with a sense of purpose destiny and responsibility a man or a woman who is a contributor to national transformation it is impossible for any territory to indefinitely reject such a one. You can be misunderstood, you can be criticized, you can be envied. Unfortunately, it's the lot that comes with greatness. But one thing you cannot be denied is a chance to become a representation of God's glory within that territory. That one, no man can take it from you. Are we learning? So, if you truly desire greatness in Christ, you truly desire to bear fruit, that your life eventually becomes a manifestation of the glory of God, this is your course curriculum. If I were you, I will go and write this thing down. And periodically during my retreat, I will use this as some of the indices that gauge my growth. You can know you are growing and you can know you are stunted. Many believers do not have a system of assessing their spiritual growth. They cannot tell whether or not they are growing. They think longevity in church equals to growth. They think learning all the songs that are sung in church means growth. They think learning Bible verses necessarily mean growth. No. These are the irrefutable principles. Non-negotiable, non-compromising standards. If you want to become a voice, a sound, that speaks and to cause the nations to listen. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that with every sermon, with every teaching that includes that of tonight, that your heart be open to partner with God like a seed partners with the earth to become a giant oak tree. May you partner with God in this journey to becoming. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, my second assignment. Are you learning already? My second assignment is to review for the next two or three minutes something that I taught you some time ago that there are six foundational truths in your quest for knowledge. It is foolish to try to learn everything. No, God will not give man the burden to learn everything. Everything is not required for your greatness. There is an exact body of light. There is an exact, you know, sometimes um, for many people who are students, when you are preparing for exams, especially if the course is very vast, sometimes you can plead that the lecturer shows you mercy by showing you something called the area of concentration. You see, remember that? That means you say, help us. If you give us, if you allow us to read everything from start to finish, chances are excellent we may not be able to, to, you know, cover grounds. And sometimes the man can say, okay, focus on this, focus on this, focus on that. There are many things to learn. Unfortunately, most of them are useless. As far as you're knowing God, representing his purposes and excelling is concerned. Just because knowledge is spiritual does not mean it is useful. 
That is the reason why the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. And that even in the presence of truth, you must be guided. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many believers who pride in knowledge that is useless before the situations that plague them. Knowledge that cannot reveal Jesus. Knowledge that cannot bless men. Knowledge that cannot improve your life. Knowledge that cannot promote the program of God is useless knowledge. So in pressing for the knowledge that makes you mighty and victorious. By the spirit I was able to list for us foundationally. Listen, no matter what you know in the spirit. If you do not know this that I'm about to review. You will live a defeated life. A life that will consistently misrepresent God. Can I run the list for you? Number one, you must know God. This is the first thing I taught you. That in order of spiritual priority, as you explore spiritual knowledge, in your quest to walk in victory and dominion, your first port of call is that you must know God through Jesus Christ. The way we know God is to learn Jesus. The Bible says, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Let me tell you the truth. Your confidence in life is predicated upon the God that you know. Are we together? If you know a weak God, you will manifest a weak destiny. If you know a lopsided God based on your perception, you will produce a lopsided destiny. You must know God. You must press to know Jesus. And I went further to teach you that in knowing God, there are three major areas we explore. Number one, we know God by studying his character. We know God by studying his character. You want to know God, you study his character. For instance, the entire Psalm 103, Psalm 103, is in my opinion, one of the most concise compendium of God's character. You can know God when you study his character. Number two, you know God when you study his ways, his modus operandi his principles the mysteries of the kingdom we know god when we study his ways it helps you to know how god behaves and it helps you to know how god does not behave it helps you to understand how the kingdom was structured to operate the third and final platform for knowing god is by learning his power ephesians chapter 1 from verse 19 and to know the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe god wants us to know him by knowing his power something happens to you when you know how powerful god is it has the capacity to kill fear it has the capacity to erode unnecessary concerns when you know who god is and the power that was invested in raising christ from the dead the power that took him from hades to the earth took him from the earth to the throne that same power can take you from any level to any level are we learning number two the second foundational knowledge all believers must have as far as building your knowledge bank for a victorious life is concerned is that number two you must know yourself in light of who christ is this sounds very elementary but this is profound Get ready to live a frustrated life if you do not know yourself in light of who Christ is. Our world today has suffered and sadly continues to suffer a cancer of identity crisis. Champions acting like chickens. Warriors acting like weak men. Gideons hiding, not knowing that they have the destinies of warriors. That they have the capacity to lead an army. Something happens to you when you learn yourself. Not just from a sociological standpoint. Not just from an anthropological standpoint. You learn yourself in light of who Christ is. Because when we know him, we were created in his image. So you learn him to know yourself. You don't investigate yourself to know yourself. No, the new man is a reflection of who Christ is. So you learn Christ to know who you are or who you should be. 
Many believers do not know who they are. Number three, the third foundational knowledge that you need in order to live an excelling and a victorious life is that you must know your place in destiny and God's prophetic program. I wish I could spend all night talking about this. You must know if you know God through Jesus Christ, you know yourself in light of who Christ is, your next assignment in terms of foundational knowledge, if you desire a life that excels, is that you must know first and foremost that you have a place in destiny. Even if you don't know what that place is, have it at the back of your mind, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that you have a role to play. That means you are not just a number among the 8 billion plus people roaming around the earth. It is revealing, it is healing to know that I count in destiny. I count in God's program. Hallelujah. You must know that you have a place. Then you must go further to know that place. Know your place in life and destiny. Something happens to an individual the moment you find your place of purpose, your place in destiny. The young boy Jeremiah had a conversation with God in chapter 1 and verse 5. And the Lord was revealing to him his destiny. And he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. So if you ask Jeremiah, who are you? He would say, by my divine mandate, I have been called to be a prophet to the nation. It doesn't matter who believed the vision or who did not believe the vision coming from the lips of God. He says, lo, I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book. I have to convince you that your academics is not why you leave. It is only a passage to equip you so that you are equipped for life and destiny. I need to convince you, are we together? That secular knowledge or your career as it were is not necessarily your assignment. It can be part of your assignment. It is your responsibility to work with the spirit of grace under a structured mentorship platform like this to find your place in destiny. If you do not find your place in destiny, you will live a life of anger, hatred, annoyance because you will watch people making progress in destiny. They will derive a joy you do not know where it's coming from. Our world is full of frustrated people today who are just growing old. They wake up in the morning, they sleep late at night to eat the bread of sorrow. There is nothing that is exciting about their living. Ask them what is your project at this point. At best they will say I'm looking for money. Ten years later, I'm still on that project. Age 50, I'm still on that project. 80 years, I'm too old to continue the project. And they die a very frustrated life. An intelligent God will not take the time to invest in building an individual who lives a wasted life. Here is the trajectory of the life of the average person. You are born, struggle your way through teenage, begin to explore life, and if you are fortunate to have good parents or a good system of guidance, you will escape many regrets. If you are not fortunate, you begin to write a nasty story that sometimes you may spend the rest of your life regretting. A few years later, you attain 18. Society calls you an adult and you begin sometimes a clueless journey into adulthood. Then marriage comes in. Then children come in, you are confused, they join you in that confusion. And then if you are fortunate to have a career, it may give you some sense of destiny until trouble strikes, until spirits strike. And then you continue that way, adding age upon age. And then when you get to 50, golden jubilee, they call it midlife crisis. All kinds of troubles begin to ferment themselves. Largely as a result of your not knowing how God designed life to work. I hope I did not describe you. I hope I am not describing where you are going to. Because that is a very, very, very mediocre life. Doesn't give God glory. There is no dignity 
in living such a life. An intelligent God loves you more than that. There is a path that leads to excellence. Life can be worth living when you understand that you count in God's program. You believe that? Shout a loud Amen. The Bible says that if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. This video you just watched now, we believe that it has increased strength in you and it has set burdens in your heart. If you, are new, if you are new to this video, please subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell to get daily uploads, comment, like this video, and God will bless you. Thank you.